Wait 2. My name is Michael Lobenstein. I am the director of the Austrian Film Museum and we are really excited to host you here for the second edition of this conference or of this meeting and gathering, seminar, workshop, whatever you may want to call it. But in any case, I think pretty much the most exciting thing that's happening this week anywhere in the world. <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> right. Um, look, I'm, I'm going to keep it very brief because this, this incredible schedule that was put together through a collective effort of the uh, program committee and is supported by an incredible amount of volunteer work really m is the brainchild of all of your input. So um, having seen this grow over the last couple of months, pretty much from an initial email that said, look, we're we are going to host that conference. Would you be willing to collaborate as a venue? And then seeing all of this develop was pretty much watching a an avalanche or a really, I think, a complete change of the game as regards an awareness and um, a collective worldwide effort to actually talk about and pursue and uh, further the issue of long-term digital preservation of audiovisual assets, particularly in an open standard environment. And that is something that having come from a large government organization, so for the last couple of years, I was the chief executive of the National Film and Sound Archive of Australia, which is a federal government agency, to a small not-for-profit organization, which you can see here, the Austrian Film Museum, because pretty much this is our exhibition gallery too. Um, it, it has become apparent that um, the future, no matter if we work in a large governmental context or if we work for small not-for-profits, whether we work for broadcast archives or collections of private materials on um, analog tape media or on um, motion picture film, or if we work in artist cinematics, the future is actually in collaboration and in the co-development of standards that ensure that that is actually sustainable. There's going to be so much interesting stuff over the next two days in this regard that I'm not going to talk too much about the contents, but I also am here to not only convey the Austrian Film Museum's excitement that we can host you and that we can particularly learn from you and, ex and, and exchange ideas with you over the next two days, but also from FIAF, the International Federation of Film Archives, um, sends greetings and, and uh, FIAF as an organization traditionally very much based in the appreciation and preservation of motion picture film. Some people say forever stuck in the past and un incapable of actually embracing digital. I think FIAF is beginning to move um, along too and Lars, you would hopefully agree. I see you sm at least I see you smirk. That's good. <laughs> All right. Um, look, very, very um, briefly, some housekeeping. And this is uh, housekeeping for as, as the, as the uh, general manager of this venue here. This is a wonderful auditorium, I think. It was actually built initially as a lecture hall, then became a cinema when Peter Kubelka and Peter Kohn-Lechner, the founders of the Austrian Film Museum, moved in here and turned this into the invisible cinema. It was never supposed to be a conference venue. It was actually supposed to be strictly a venue for film appreciation. I think it's a pretty good conference venue too, if you get used to the fact that it began become quite woozy in the semi-dark here as you doze away. If you do, if you do feel you need fresh air or anything else, you can actually either leave on this side or you can actually walk up these steps and walk down just behind um, our video broadcast and get out to actually reach the bathrooms. Just be mindful, watch your step. We don't have a handrail here. That's a long story why we don't. We are going to have a handrail at one point. Please don't trip. Uh, it's my public liability insurance, all right? <laughs> Um, the other thing is um, this auditorium has a strict no food uh, rule. Please obey to it. Like we, we will have breaks. You will be able to have snacks and uh, lunch outside. Please do not bring food in here. Any rubbish you uh, produce or you bring with you, just take it out with you. There is a bin just right next to the door. And bottled water is okay. Any other questions you have about the venue, if you feel unwell, if you need anything, Helmut, who's standing over there, is our duty manager, and he's here all day for you. So look, all the best, and I head o hand over to uh, Bert, who's going to speak on behalf of Performer. Good morning. Uh, I'm Bert Lemons. I'm working for PECT, uh, Digital Exper uh, Expertise Center in Digital Heritage, based in Brussels. And... Today I'm here to uh, speak on behalf of the uh, 
Preforma project. And it's a real pleasure for me to welcome you here uh, all in um, Vienna. One moment, because I lost my notes. Ah, thank you. <laughs> it's better. Um, so as you probably know, uh, a lot of the work that uh, has been done in the past years on the development of uh, media conch and the work of the, the seller working group has been funded through uh, a European research grant. Um, and uh, we're now, end of 2017, the Preforma project will, uh, will be completed. And for the moment, we're doing the final reporting and the first... Uh, um, reactions we get from the European Commission is that they consider it really a successful project and I think an important part of that success is actually the, the fact that you are all gathered here in this room today. That's really an important uh, outcome of uh, the Preforma project. Why? Because um, you have to understand that when we wrote this project um, five years ago, I think, um, and we had to write, a, we, we wrote a proposal and we wanted to discuss the topic of the importance of adherence to open standards and the importance of open standards for long-term preservation. We struggled a lot to, to make this topic, to explain this topic to the European Commission. And we ended up with a project proposal where we made a very strong stance on um, the importance of the use of open source. And, um, and the importance of open source to enable uh, long-term preservation of digital files. And uh, to our big surprise, when we received this huge bag of money, we understood that um, we had a huge opportunity to not only spend that amount of money on the development <coughs> of yet another open source tool, which ends up somewhere on GitHub and, and be forgotten there, but uh, that the real challenge of the project was to uh, to build trust in the formats, the open formats that we proposed and that we that we advocated for. That that was actually the the, the real challenge we had to meet, and that was particularly true for the art audiovisual part of the project, which you are all uh, interested in here, because particularly in that part of the project we we had at that time the silly idea of not just developing another open source tool, but introducing a completely new format. And today at the end of the project, 2017, this is still a big concern for us. That's what we have developed and what we have done, the project that it not ends up uh, in January to somewhere on GitHub and, and be forgotten. But when I look here in the room and I see about 100 people gathered together, uh, and that they are planning to discuss exciting issues like standardization of formats and uh, implementation and adoption by archivists, but also by software developer developers. I think that the people from uh, Dave and Jerome and the people at the uh, media area and seller did a wonderful job and that they more or less accomplished what we wrote in the challenge brief of the project, uh, which is like encourage people and convince people to gain, of not people convince archivists to gain uh, uh, control over what we call the technical properties of the files they have to preserve. So that's why we are really happy that you're all together here in this room. Um, I'm even more excited to find in the program completely new issues like uh, how do we introduce open formats in uh, archival education? How, what are the challenges of mass migration of uh, audiovisual files. Um, uh, how do we deal with quality control and film scanning? These are things that five years ago were somewhere on the radar, but we didn't dream of tackling these issues at any moment in the project or in the next five years. So I'm really excited to uh, discuss all these topics with, with you, and I, uh, I wish you all an inspiring two-day uh, conference here in Vienna. Thank you very much.